Okay, so what we're looking at now are some pom-poms uh, made out of, I'm going to show you how to do it using a fork. So if you don't have a pom-pom maker, this is a quick and easy way to make a little small pom-pom. Now these are part of our Rebecca Rabbit collection. Uh, there are mittens, so we've got a pattern where you can knit mittens, um, fingerless gloves here, or wrist warmers, all with the lovely little Rebecca Rabbit on there. So look, you can have a little head onto your uh, wrist warmer. I would try these on and model them, but I think these were made for my daughter and they are a little bit small for me. Um, and so on one hand we put the head and on the other hand we put her tail, her lovely little pom-pom tail. So I just thought I'd show you how to make a little pom-pom, whether it's for a Rebecca Rabbit or anything else that you want a pom-pom for. It's actually Rebecca um, over there, she's got a actual Rebecca Toy, she's got a pom-pom. She has, look, she's got a pom-pom <laughs> tail, bless her. Um, so, yeah, plenty of use for pom-poms. Who doesn't love a pom-pom? We can make pom-pom chicks for Easter. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our yarn around the fork. So I'm just going to hold it on the back to get it started. But we're just wrapping our yarn around the middle of the fork. And, oops. Oh, I didn't send to pull my ball. That was silly. It's all rolling all over the place now. So, a bit of winding. Windy, windy, windy. Now, I'm not going to do too much because we don't want to keep this video very long. Um, but having wound quite a bit on, and you want to get kind of quite a big chunk of, of yarn on there. This isn't really enough yet. Let's do a bit more. If you've got big forks, you can make bigger pom-poms. Tiny forks, you can make tiny pom-poms. This is going to make a smallish one. Won't be too huge. All right, I'm going to just say that's enough there. You might want to make your pom-pom a bit fluffier. See how this one turns out and you can choose to do a bit more with it. Right, then we want another length of yarn. Just chop that off. And sometimes, particularly if you filled up your pom-pom, your fork quite full, uh, you may find that you find it hard to thread your yarn through this bottom part. So I often use a needle there just to thread it through. And what we're doing, I'm going to actually go around twice just to make this nice and secure. So we're threading our yarn around the bundle using the prongs of the fork. So this is where the fork comes in handy. And what we're going to do is pull this nice and tight. Now, often it helps to have another pair of hands here, but Joe's other hand is filming this at the moment. So whether we can actually manage this, we didn't practice this, did we? No, we didn't. So I don't know, have you got a spare hand that you could manage? Can you squeeze a finger into there? That's it. Sorry if the camera goes a bit wobbly. This is real, this is live, people. This is good stuff. Yay, okay. great stuff. There we go. So now we've got it nice and tight, as tight as you possibly can around the middle of the fork. And then what you can do is slide it off the fork like that. And we go and we chop all the loops in there. You want some fairly decently sharp scissors here. We chop all the loops. Be, don't don't chop off your tails here because you'll want those to hold on to. So uh, try and keep those separate. But just go around and chop all the loops if you can find them. Sometimes we find them afterwards. Mm -hmm. Do 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 do. There we go. I'm not going to spend too long on this, but roughly speaking, there is your pom-pom. He -pom. could do with a little more yarn, but he's doing all right. And then clearly you do need to do sometimes a little bit of a rough haircut. Mm -hmm. Do -do -do -do. A little short back and sides. So, so be careful not to let go of your tails because you want to use those. You can use these. These tails can be used to join your pom-pom onto whatever you want and you give it a good fluffy out. There you go, one little pom-pom made with a fork. Oh look, there's some loops there. Can you see what I mean? This is where we end up with, we suddenly find loops afterwards. There you go. Da, da, da. Beautiful. 
And now, remember. in the pattern, you mentioned yes. that in order to make your pom-pom fluffier, you can... Oh, you can split your yarn, yes. This, I'll show you quickly how to do this. So, if you want to make your pom-pom a little bit smoother and fluffier, it's, 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 it takes a bit more effort to do it. But what we do is cut your yarn into slightly shorter strips. And then you can see here, you can split this. If you untwist it slightly, I've got three strands in there. I don't know if you can see that. There's three strands in my yarn. So what I'm going to do is take one at a time and very gently pull it out. Let's see if we can slide it out like this. Now, what you mustn't do with this is do it... Uh -huh, it's already split. Yeah, if you do it on too long a piece of thread, you will find that it breaks. And just slide down. So this is a slightly painful job because mm -hmm. you do have to split the ply and all your bits of yarn. There we go, there's one bit. The second bit should come out quite easily. You should be able to split that this way. So could you instead use a lace weight yarn? Uh, you could you could use a finer weight yarn. I guess it's also about matching, um, matching the colour way. But yeah, you could use you could use a finer weight yarn. The thing about this is it's actually the ply is softer, so even a lace weight yarn is spun tighter. So the point about splitting the plies is now that this is much softer. Can you see you've got threads coming off it? It's a much softer piece this is actually not the best yarn to split if I'm honest um, we could have done this with a slightly thicker yarn and actually mm -hmm. split it <laughs> to be honest it would have been easier this is felting slightly as I split it which is why it's just tangling so yeah it's um actually it is easier to do if you have like a um a four ply or a double knit worsted weight yarn actually remarkably it's easier to split it up so once you split this. it, you would then just use those bits and That's wrap them That's right, the yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think we're going to have time on the video to split enough yarn to... Uh, no, no, we're not. Pom -pom. We're not. We're not. I'm just going to split... Oh, yay! Pulled it out. I have. Yes. So now you've got all these strands like this, and you just pick them up. You can do a little handful together. Um, you don't have to worry about them all being exactly right. And then you would just wrap all the strands around your fork like this or, or your pom-pom maker um, and then you just keep going with as many you need a little pile of split yarn and you just keep wrapping them around don't worry about the ends because of course they just become the ends of your pom-pom and your pom-pom probably needs slightly more of a haircut uh, than my other one did but that will work very well and what you get then is a much fluffier type of tail and I'm just thinking I don't even have a good example of that these I think were all done yeah they were all done with the fixed yarn and I think your tail no this oh, one this fluffy. yeah she's fluffy can you see that her tail is fluffier compare. compare look you can compare there you go that's a good comparison the two different types of tails. So this one wasn't split and this one was. And you can see it's just a little softer and fluffier. Um, so there you go. That's how to make a pom-pom quick and easy with a fork. No cutting bits of cardboard or pom-pom makers required. Although you are a bit restricted on size depending on what size forks you have. So there you go.